Hello friends and welcome to another quick MarioMayhem.com video. With the release of the Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Wii U, now seemed like as good a time as any to branch out into some other Nintendo games and bring you a bunch of facts from not one Metroid game, not two Metroid games, but facts from all three games in the Metroid Prime Trilogy. So sit back, try not to get attacked by Metroids or Space Pirates and enjoy some video game facts y'all. Metroid Prime Facts during early development of Metroid Prime, a gorilla enemy with four arms was part of the game. Thought to be planned as the boss of the ice area, Nintendo removed the gorilla after early models supposedly looked too RPG-ish and didn't fit with the Metroid theme. Also scrapped during development was this odd flying insect styled enemy. Some people have speculated that this guy was either going to be a boss somewhere in the game, or he might have actually been an early design for the aerial pirates. Kraid was set to return in Metroid Prime and his character model was even fully finished. However, due to time constraints and a pressing release date, it was decided that Kraid wasn't imperative enough to the project to risk polishing the boss fight if it meant pushing back the release date. Hiding unused in the game's data is this scan image of what appears to be a Shine Sparking Samus. An interview with Retro Studio reveals that they considered adding the Shine Spark and the Speed Booster, but after having difficulties adding them to the game, the idea was scrapped. If you had a completed Game Boy Advance game of Metroid Fusion, a link cable for your GameCube, and also completed Metroid Prime, you could unlock Samus's original Fusion suit for playing Metroid Prime. It doesn't actually add any benefits though, it just looks shiny. A cool little attention to detail here by the game devs. Next time you are using the X-Ray visor, try switching beam types. The hand symbol seen on the icons for each beam shows the gesture Samus must make inside her suit to actually activate the different beam types. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes We can thank Tony Giovannini from Retro Studios for starting the ball rolling with Metroid Prime 2's development. This level designer pitched quite a different game to the final Echoes we received though. The game pitched was dubbed Metroid 1.5 and involved Samus being abducted by alien spaceships and then having to fight schizophrenic AI. The pitch also included a more intense multiplayer version and from the look of these early sketches you can't help but wonder how this game would have turned out. If you ever struggled to beat the Boost Guardian, don't feel too bad. The game's senior director of development, Brian Walker, has claimed that he himself could only defeat the Guardian with the use of the game's debug mode. Way back in 2005, one of the early demos of the Wii featured a remade version of Metroid Prime 2. Of the eight demos available at the time, it was the first to incorporate the Wii's nunchuck and actually took a single developer two months to complete ready to demo at the Tokyo Game Show. Metroid Prime 3 Corruption Metroid Prime 3 Corruption preview trailers depicted these blueprints for what the game refers to as a future Aurora unit complex. Whilst these initially look like plain old regular Galactic Federation blueprints, the layout is pretty much identical to Mother Brain's chambers in Turian from Super Metroid on the SNES. Back in 2005, there were rumours flying around of the development of a side-scrolling Metroid called Metroid Dread. It was revealed later that this game was planned but then was cancelled. However, Metroid Prime 3 does acknowledge the game or perhaps adds fuel to the rumour of its release. When you scan a computer screen, the game gives you the message, Experiment Status Report Update, Metroid Project Dread is nearing the final stages of completion. Corruption was the first in the trilogy to use a lot of voice acting to immerse you in the game. The majority of voice actors weren't well known, however die-hard anime fans might recognise the voice of Christopher Sabat, who voices Rundas. Sabat is probably best known for his voice work in Dragon Ball Z and GT, where he voices Vegeta and Piccolo. Try playing Metroid 3 with some different save game files in your Wii's memory. Different games can give you different bumper stickers on your ship. These games include Super Smash Bros Brawl, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Paper Mario, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, WarioWare Smooth Moves, and more. Anyway, that's it for today friends, I hope you enjoyed these various Metroid Prime facts and things from the trilogy. We've already had a few requests for other games, but if you would like to see us cover another non-Mario Nintendo title, let us know in the comments below. With any luck, I'll be able to cover some more Nintendo titles in between the Mario Mayhem. Thanks again to all of you for your likes, comments, and general support. You're all legends. And don't worry, I'll be back with more Mario soon.